One UI 7 and the Galaxy S25 Ultra are literally a perfect match. That is because Samsung have designed it from the ground up to support this phone. So why not take full advantage of that and make it yours? Well, let's go. So today we're gonna to go through all of the One UI 7 changes that you can customize. So things from like the lock screen and always on display, all the way through to some of the settings in the camera, and even take a sneak peek at some of the good lock functionality that we can expect from One UI 7 when it finally gets updated. Starting with the lock screen. The lock screen is like your first thing that you see before you dive into your phone. Has all sorts of information that you can customize and add to it, and One UI 7 expands on it heaps. So let's customize it to your liking. First, you can see the lock screen and AOD sort of settings menu inside the settings. There's some stuff in there that you can tweak and we'll jump in there a little bit later on. I wanna start though with going straight to the lock screen itself because if you jump on there, a long press on your wallpaper and then go use your security method to get in, it brings up a whole bunch of customization options. First thing I wanna talk about is lock screen widgets. Samsung have kind of redefined what they are. They used to be where you swipe across and there was like a stack of widgets, kind of useless. Now there's ones directly on your lock screen. You can put, depending on the size of widgets that you choose, I think just a slightly more, the three or maybe four widgets sort of next to each other in this little sort of slinky card at the top underneath your clock. You can see the list is quite extensive. There's a whole bunch of different controls and sort of metrics that you can see at a glance from the widgets that you choose. I've selected the gallery, I've selected activity, and I've selected calendar, or like an event that's coming that day. And then when you put them there for the gallery, for example, you have to choose an album and then it starts to rotate through those photos. Or for activity, you choose, you see the activity metrics sort of live on a tile and then the calendar's the same. It shows you any activities that's coming for that day. But there's heaps. And it's not just those, there's a bunch of stuff in there. Like you can even launch the camera from a widget or like a custom camera mode, which is great. Also sort of, I guess, customizing on the lock screen is shortcuts. The shortcuts are the two things down the bottom left and right corner that you can like long press and activate and drag to the side and it turns it on. Again, you can go really extensive with what you want to put here. There's a whole set of stuff like tasks, I guess you could call them at the top. But then underneath that is any app that's installed on your phone can also be launched as well. By default, I think it's phone and camera, but you can change that. I've got it now set to do not disturb on the left. So if I long press and swipe, it'll activate do not disturb or the torch on the other side. Again, long press and a swipe turns the torch on and then do the same to turn it back off. Sort of sandwiched in between those two things is the now bar. The now bar is something that inside the settings, you can see all the toggles that I guess can appear there. And it's just so convenient. I would leave this on because not only does it appear in the lock screen, but also an always on display, which we'll get to in a moment. It is such a good tool. The ability to look at clocks, the ability to look at sports scores, the ability to look at maps. It'll show a live sort of activity there. It's great. And then obviously the now briefing is a part of that too. And again, turn the now briefing on because that is like a little notification that pops up every now and then to sort of give you a rundown of your day or what's ahead the day following. I really like it. But you can customize that in the settings. It's not actually from the lock screen itself. It's inside the settings menu. Then there's always on display. And I think always on display is something that Samsung phones started with Galaxy S7 and have kind of in implemented and incrementally improved as time's gone on. The always on display now is the best version of always on display on any phone. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, it kind of mimicked iOS's lock screen wallpaper, always on display option, but it's taken it a step further and made it better. I love the option to remove the background of the lock screen wallpaper. So you've got the black sort of turned off pixels, so it saves battery, and then the picture in the foreground. Really good if you've got your wallpaper of kids because I love that sort of functionality that it's got. This is all customizable in the always on display section of the lock screen menu. And when you're in here, you can also make it be tap to show if you don't want it to be on all the time. You can make it be auto. The auto one's great because if you sort of have the screen in a pocket or in a bag, it just turns it off. And then as soon as it reaches light again, turns it back on. Then there's the other options like schedule 
uh, evening to morning to evening, that sort of stuff that's in there too. The other parts of the lock screen is how you want notifications to show. So Samsung have introduced something new with One UI 7. You can have little icons at the top as opposed to them being like sprawled all over your lock screen. It actually keeps it quite clean and you still can see if you've got notifications. But there's other options too. If you go into the notifications menu, not lock screen, and go to lock screen notifications, you'll see the options you have there. You have dot, which literally will just be like a little dot in the corner. You have the cards that sort of sprawl themselves out all over the lock screen. And then you have the icons, which is sit nestled up at the top left corner in your notification drop down, which I like. But the lock screen can be customized a little bit more with AI. Samsung have put in some, I guess, other tools and metrics to change the wallpaper directly from the lock screen itself. And once you've sort of settled on your wallpaper, you've got this thing here called Suggest. What Suggest does is it basically uses the other tools that it's got, and you've got things like frames and effects that you can add in and layouts as well. That stuff you can customize manually, or you can let Suggest do it for you. And with Suggest, it automatically optimizes it and picks a few different layouts for you based on the photo that you've got as your wallpaper. It'll put the clock and the widget somewhere. It'll make the background have an effect of some kind, and you can choose an different option or make it suggested again. Love that. Like if you can't choose, if you're not really stylistically good at picking something like that, this can be a great option. Now we're going to move on to home screen. This is one that after you've unlocked your phone, you dive into here and there's a whole plethora of stuff that Samsung have enabled. You just pinch and you bring up all the home screen sort of customization options and you go into the settings. In here is where you can sort of optimize the app sizes. So the icon sizes of the apps, you can remove the labels from the apps. So if you want the names of the apps to be disappeared, you can do that. You can change the grid size of that home screen to be a little bit tighter or a little bit more spaced out. It's up to you. That will be inconsequential in a moment. Stick with me. You then got widgets that you can add to your home screen. Now there's a more extensive list of widgets than there's ever been before in One UI 7. And when you go through the widgets list from that little pinch out menu that I showed you, you'll just scroll through and see the extensive, exhaustive list of widgets that you can choose from. If you've never used widgets before, which I think by now most people should have, even if you didn't know what they were, they're just a real good shortcut into apps. You click on it, it takes you through. I love that sort of fluidity that Samsung pretty much pioneered when it came to the earlier versions of Android. There's also a new thing that they have done with folders where you can actually make the folders bigger. So rather than them being the size with all the apps squished in there, you can enlarge it to a bigger size. And then what this allows for too is direct access to the app inside the folder. Rather than needing to open the folder first, you just press the app icon and it opens it up. That's a really good option. In here too, you can customize your wallpaper for your home screen. Very similar options, except there's a couple of extra stuff that the home screen wallpaper has allowed for. This is old, it's not new, but there is some stuff in here which has become permanent, like the option to put the wallpaper conducive to the weather. That was in labs before, now it's a part of the operating system. But if you wanna choose an AI wallpaper that's sort of next to that, you can do that as well. The thing with the wallpaper here is whatever wallpaper you've chosen, you can then choose a color palette to apply to pretty much the entire operating system, including app icons as well. And there's different colors that it extracts from your wallpaper to apply to these sorts of things. This is where you do it. All of that though, you can pretty much forget about it if you're going to use HomeUp. HomeUp is a part of GoodLock. Now GoodLock is going through some changes and updating for One UI 7. At the time of filming, the only way you can get this Home Up module on the S25 series is through a Fine Lock APK, which is like allowing countries that didn't have Good Lock access to it. And then the Home Up APK that then you also have to sideload in and then it shows up in Fine Lock because it doesn't show up in Home and Good Lock main module yet, which is weird. Now there's actually a second way that you can, and probably a much easier way that you can actually access the Home Up from the home screen. You don't need good lock, you don't need fine lock. As long as the home up APK is installed, you just pinch out to zoom on the home screen, scroll down to the bottom, and you've got more customization, I think it's called. And in there, you can go straight into home up, much easier. But in home up, there is so much more that you can do. There's the animations, which is just wild. Now, Samsung phones have not been known for their most fluid of animations for the last few generations. 
One UI 7 has fixed that. However, with this new home up, Samsung is giving you so much more flexibility with customizing animations. When you go into the, the home gesture tuning inside home up, there's a whole bunch of things. There's like a whole bunch of preset ones. And you can see sort of, as I go through, there's like simple, there's like elegant, there's dynamic. Uh, there's a couple other ones in there as well. I really like the dynamic one. It just looks so fast. There's also some more, I guess, simple and advanced tuning that you can do. There's like a slider that Samsung have put in that allows you to sort of tune it to be a bit more, they call it emotional, basically just slower or fast, which is effectively dynamic, but like on steroids. And then you can go into advanced tuning and you scroll through this and it's overwhelming with what you can actually do in here. There is so many options to customize your animations. The animation is to go when an app is open back to home, that's it. But you can change how the app behaves, how it goes back into place. You can blow the background. You could change the zoom of your lock screen, your, your background and your home screen, the wallpaper. You can change the speed of the apps as they zoom in and out when you go back. There is so much in there that you can do. It's a lot. And Samsung have given you all the tools you need. You just got to go in and try it for yourself. But if you don't like any of them, those options, just do the preset ones. And I find dynamic to be the best for me. But that's not what this is about. This is about the home screen settings inside home up where you can actually have a free form home screen. So that whole app grid size I spoke about, forget it. You can build your own home screen in any format you like. Rotate the icons, move them around the screen, free formed, add stickers, add text. It's really customizable to you. It's an insane thing that Samsung have opened up and I'm so glad it's here because even if it's just a little tiny tweak, the ability to move things slightly fractionally off the grid could suit your wallpaper style. Love it. I'll leave some links in the description of how to get this all activated as well. Then it's the quick panel. The quick panel, I guess, is a way of accessing notifications, but also quick toggles for settings. It's always traditionally been one swipe for the quick panel at the top and a second swipe to get the rest of the quick panel accessed. Last year, Samsung kind of moved to a model where you can have left for the notifications in the top quick panel. And then if you want straight to go, a right swipe from the top right corner brings the whole thing down. You've always been able to do that with a two finger swipe too, but who's counting? You know, probably everyone. What I want to show you here is how you can customize this quick panel. When you look at it, you know, it's quite a fluid interaction. Swipe down and then swipe across to get to the quick panel toggles and then interact with it the way you want. But it might not be in the order you want it to be. So if you hit the edit icon, which is a little pencil, you bring up the edit function. And then if you long press on a, like a module, you can drag and drop it anywhere you want. And that's kind of cool because if you have trouble reaching the top of the screen to turn off Wi-Fi, bring the Wi-Fi one down. It's easy. If you want to expand how many quick panel toggles are shown, swipe it down. Easy. Or if you want to make it before again, swipe it back up. Easy. Now you set that and that's your quick panel that you've customized. But you might prefer the old way. So Samsung en enabled that with a setting where you can have it separate or together. When you turn it to together, you one swipe down, it'll bring up the top quick panel toggles and the notifications, second swipe, the rest of them, which is exactly how it used to be. If that's your muscle memory, if you don't want to get used to a newer way, then go with that. Otherwise, try the new way out. There's also one in here where if you're left-handed, you can turn on the quick panel coming from the left side. Could be something you want to do. That's in there too. Then we move on to the app screen or the app drawer. So when you swipe up from the home screen, all your apps are there. I forgot to mention, if you wanted to make the app screen go away, you can make it be like the iPhone where you've got the home screen and the app screen mushed together. It's messy as anything, and I do not recommend it. There's a reason why Samsung do it this way, not the other way. But there's also a reason why they offer it as a toggle because of the fact that people switching across might feel more comfortable with that layout, but not me. I like it the other way. But in the app screen, when you swipe up, you'll notice it's a vertical scroll now as opposed to a horizontal. But if you liked the horizontal, you can go back to it by hitting the three dots and going to sort 
and then it'll sort it in a custom order and that'll be horizontal, but it leaves gaps. So you then need to go back into there and hit clean up pages, it fills those gaps in. It's back to the way it was, except with the finder being down the bottom, which is good. That's more easy to use one handed. But if you keep it vertical or if you keep it horizontal, you could change how many there are across. So with horizontal, it'll be columns and grids. So you can customize how many or with vertical, it'll just be how many there are that way. Again, completely up to you and it's all in there. That's how you can sort of change it to be a bit more to where you want it. Then we'll dive into the camera. Now, look, the camera, I will leave to a full video for the rest of the modes, because there's a lot of stuff in here that I recommend doing. I've done it the last two years. And I think this year more than ever, there's some extra stuff in here, which people might want to know the nitty gritty of. So I've got that for another video, hit subscribe to get you started. There's some camera modes that you can bring in and I'll show you how to do it. And you swipe across to the more tab in the camera, you'll see all the extra stuff. Now you don't have to just leave them there. You can hold it down and drag it into your carousel of modes that you use. So in mine, I've got heaps of the ones I use like single take portrait video. I've just added night mode and I've also added pro video mode because they're better at sort of capturing things in different environments. And you can bring them in and anything you don't use, you can put back into the more button. And then every time you need it, you just swipe to more and they're there. Obviously, if you prefer a cleaner look down the bottom, you can put them all in more except for photo and video. But honestly, bring down the ones you use the most. It'll be way easier to get to. And then good lock. Good lock for me, I think is what separates One UI apart because you get all the great customization One UI features existing. And then there's good lock, which unlocks more than what you can do. I love the home up one that I showed you, but there's other things too, like sound assistant, which I've done a full video on. You can go and check that out up there. I love Navstar, which gives you some extra navigation options. There's a lot in there. It's actually too much for this video. This video would be way too long if I left all of it in there. So I will put together a full good lock video. You let me know what you want to see from it in the comments below. Hit subscribe again for that to come out. But everything else that I've done should get you started and get you customized for your own personal One UI 7 S25 experience. Lots more content still to come this year. It's only February. So of course there is. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Yo.